puppet play a doll How they want you A lap dog, a cow, a cat A wuss, it brought you A counting on the days To help you forget A Chasing the crowd Just get so caught up with regret Tonight's special guest, Mr. Paul Bellantoni. Hello, everybody. Hello. We had a couple of tense uh, minutes while that intro. We had what they call a nice oh adrenaline my rush. God, my heart is pounding out of my chest. In the studio, we had two windows open in YouTube, and they were just a smidge off, like just a couple seconds off. And Rich was running around the studio like it was on fire because we couldn't figure out what was wrong and uh yeah i uh, i figured it out so that's a first for me to figure out a tech issue you did you totally figured <laughs> it out. i had no idea what was going on so just uh just give rich a second to just take some uh cleansing yoga breaths rich what do you got let me adjust my tie you guys can hear us <laughs> you can see us can yeah. you see us can you hear us Papa, can you hear uh, me? The, Al Schwartz said, see and hear. The Lynn winner Stewart said yes. The winner of the jumble was the lovely Dawn Stanhope. Dawn Stanhope. It was Raconteur. Tell everybody what a Raconteur is, Rich. A uh, Raconteur is a storyteller, or at least, a, I don't know, a, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe that's not what it is. I don't know. I always think of it as someone who is a, a, a very a great storyteller. Someone who spins a mean yarn. Spins a mean yarn, yes. As they say. I don't know who says that. You so, say that all the time. Somebody confirmed that for me. I always thought of that's why the raconteurs were called the raconteurs, the band. That's why uh, he put that for tonight, because it's the storyteller show. In case you have not caught on yet, the jumbles usually have something to do with, to, with the show. So tonight we are going to tell you some stories behind some of the songs. And uh, we also have a special guest joining us halfway through the show. Our friend, Mr. Paul Bellantoni, he is from, uh, he's going to be Skyping in from Nashville, Tennessee to do a live uh, song for you all. It's his brand new single, and he also uh, is going to play a song with us. So we're super excited to share all of that with you guys. I feel like we hung out with Paul all week. It was kind of nice. It was very nice. Even though we we're, we're in the same room. Right, because we haven't... Um, seen each other in quite some time so it was really nice to catch up with him again he's a lovely person as you will yes. see for yourself shortly you saw paul a little bit last week he has uh, a cersei tattoo 
he had the Hope Shines tattoo on his chest from our song uh, Fireflies. He had uh, that tattoo. So um, we are actually going to play Fireflies together later on. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome people on Facebook. Welcome people on YouTube. We've been chatting pre-show with a bunch of the people on YouTube. We've got Team Green and the Jacinos and Bruce from Las Vegas and Lynn Stewart and David from Connecticut Charles from Utah, Lisa from Syracuse, Chet and Denise from Syracuse, the Hart Davidsons, Bill and Leslie from Michigan. You heard about Leslie's new book last week. We have so many talented friends, man, don't we? We yes. do. So artsy fartsy. We do. All right, so uh, let's jump right in. <laughs> We're going to jump right in with the cancer. Start it right <laughs> off with a bang. <laughs> So um, uh, we have told the story of this first song that we're going to do for you. And by the way, you would expect that if we were doing a storyteller night that all of the songs would be stripped down acoustic. Nah. Nah. We're going to do one on the piano, and Paul's going to play some piano. Uh, but we're going to do some full-on rocked-out version of the songs that we're going to tell you stories to because we're doing – an acoustic show in two weeks. So we'll be doing acoustic stuff in two weeks. And we just confirmed a show. We're super excited about this. On May 9th, we are going to be doing a show at a major venue in our area. It's an iconic historic venue in our area called yes. Cafe Lena. And we're going to be doing an acoustic stripped down storyteller show. I think I'm going to play piano on stage for the first time ever in front of live humans yes. that night. Um, so there's going to be a limited amount of actual in-person tickets that will go on sale soon. And then there's going to be a way to live stream it as well. So yes. we'll keep the, you guys uh, posted. Local, local, res excited. local restrictions are 33% capacity. This will be our first inside gig that is not this room since March 13th of so last year. So we're going to be super excited, and I may have a panic attack. But it's all going to work out, and please join us. <laughs> All right. Back to the cancer, Back to Melody. the cancer. So we're going to start out with a song of ours called Like a Drum. And um, hi, Dave Michaels. I'm sorry. I'm like a cat chasing a string tonight. Our friend Dave is here from WEXT. Shout out to WEXT for all the love they show us. Thank you guys so much. Um, so Like a Drum, as you know, Rich and I wrote this song after I was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. Yes. And... The lyrics to this were obviously inspired by the fact that I am a drummer, and uh, we just kept saying to ourselves, we're going to beat this, we're going to beat this, we're going to beat this. And I would say, like my drum, we're going to beat this like my drum. And also inspired by some of the wonderful emails and love notes that you guys sent us after we announced this. But the story that we don't tell very often is kind of like when we got the diagnosis and the days that followed and how that kind of went down. It's a little, a little surreal. <clears throat> we were, uh, we were, where were we originally? We were in uh, uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Well, we right? had just left for a three month tour. Mm -hmm. We were going to go out, um, out to the West coast and back. And so it was like a good three months that we were going to be gone. And it took a lot of planning and we advertised the crap out of it. So we started out, I think in Roanoke. Yeah, yeah, we were we were in Roanoke, and uh, before we had left for for uh, for that three month uh, tour, Melanie had a routine test done because she had had so many routine tests. Because once you have cancer, the doctor is often checking you for things routinely, which yes. is which is great. We fully yes. support that. Um, and they called us when we were in Roanoke, and they said, "Well, we we saw you know a little something uh, on one of the scans. We want you to come back because uh, we want to do a biopsy." And we were like, "Okay." Melanie had kind of sadly gone through this many, many times, so we weren't very concerned. It wasn't my first rodeo with the biopsy. Yes. It was probably like my 10th or 11th. Yeah. So we, uh, we did our kind of week's worth of shows down in Virginia, and then we headed back. Well, I just want to say we were staying next to the Roanoke Breast Center. <laughs> yes. And so I tried to bargain with them, and I said, look, I'm staying next to the Roanoke Breast Center. Can I just pop in there for, for the biopsy? And they said, no, no. you have to come no. back home. Yeah. So. So we so we came back, and they did the biopsy, and then we had uh, they said it was going to cancel a gig at the Bluebird. We did in Nashville. We had a, 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 a decision to make, as they said, it's probably going to be ten to fourteen days, or maybe sooner, before you get the results. And we had dates booked that week 
in, uh, I think, starting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then we were doing a bunch of Texas dates. Uh, so we just made the decision to live our lives, assume the best, and just take off on this tour. And we were hopeful and optimistic that it was going to be the same as it had been in the past when it was really nothing. Because, yeah, like we yeah. said, it wasn't the first time we had gone through it. So we just jumped in the van with a positive attitude, and we decided to take off and go to, to Tulsa. And then... When we were in Tulsa, we were pulling, pulling up to the, the show. Yeah. We got a phone call from my doctor, and they said that I had cancer uh, for a second time, which is, you know, when you've had cancer, it's the worst nightmare come true. And um, it was, in fact, not my same cancer that had come back, but yet a brand new one just to keep life interesting. And uh, so Rich and I looked at each other. We both started crying. I think I got out of the van and paced around in a gas station parking lot a few times. You did. You did. And then we both said, all right, let's go do the show. So then we drove to Tulsa, and we played a show because that's what we do. And it, was, it ended up being kind of good because, you know, I mean, what else we were going to do? We were just going to, uh, you know, uh, cry in a hotel room. So. If I recall, it was especially good for you. Uh, <laughs> I did have a unique experience. Rich was that. a sex <laughs> symbol in Tulsa. So we, we played our, our show. We were on a bill with a couple other bands, and we played our set, and then we were packing up after our set, and a woman was so inspired uh, by our performance, and in specifically me, I guess, she came up on the stage, and she said, you guys are awesome, and she grabbed my head, pulled my face in, and gave me a big kiss on the lips. And uh, I can tell you for a fact that she was a smoker, because I, I, I could still smell it. <laughs> I could still smell the smoke. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but, uh, but I am married. And I did not point out that Melanie was my wife, but I think you, you spoke to her next, I think. She, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, he says he's married, but I don't give a crap about his wife. And I said, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I heard she's pretty cool, but oh. whatever. <laughs> So, you know, we were able to, <laughs> we were able to look back on that evening and, and, and laugh a little bit. I mean, fortunately, Melanie, Melanie is okay. As surreal as it was, yes. yeah. And then we, uh, I you bargained had, again. Yes, I yeah. bargained again with my oncologist and said, well, when do I have to come home? And she said, well, immediately. And I said, well, could I just play these shows? Because we just have like a couple more months on the road. And could we just play these couple of months and then come home. And she said, when will that bring you home? And I told her the date. And she said, no, you cannot do that. So you need to come home now. And I said, well, what about next week? We're going to be playing some shows in Texas. Could I do those shows? I'm already in Oklahoma. And she said, okay. <laughs> so we did the shows in Texas. And then, um, and then we had to face the music, yeah. as they say. We it didn't tell anybody. Yeah. We just had a couple of days to live in denial world. And then we made a public announcement and canceled the, tw canceled the tour and told everybody what was going on. And um, it was a tough ride home. It was. It was. Uh, I, I feel my heart pounding out of my chest uh, the entire time we were driving yeah. home. I think we drove home from Tulsa in two days, which is a very, very, very long haul. Melanie was basically keeping it, keeping it together. She was interacting with folks online that were being very supportive. Uh, and uh, I knew, though, that we had turned a corner when uh, we stopped to get gas. And I was pumping the gas, and Melanie went into the uh, store at the gas station. And then she came back with a bag full of Bud uh, Lime Aritas. It was basically margarita in a can. There was not a lot of selection <laughs> at this particular gas station. There was a very small selection of items. And uh, I was in the mood for something fruity. And let me tell you what. For they are not fruity. They are not good. I do not recommend those at all. They are... <laughs> Disgusting. You know that your life has taken a weird turn if you're drinking lime maritas. You know, I have an actual treat for Melanie since we went old school with the backgrounds tonight. I have some visual aids, Melanie. You do. Here's a... Oop, where'd it go? Oh, it's not there. Where is it? I don't know. It's not there. I My don't favorite know. slide. I had a picture what do you of. Got? I you had have, a picture of Melanie with a lime marita. You have slides I for do. tonight. I do. Hold on. Uh, uh, boy, I don't know. I hope it's worth all this building. It's not. I had a picture of Melanie drinking a lime marita in the van, and now it's gone. You're gonna have to post that later on. You're gonna have to post that later on. 
also we can't uh, I can't see the comments anymore so um, anyway uh, I did I did in fact full confession get kind of drunk on that way home it was a it was a rough uh, rough trip but I'm doing fine and uh, we wrote this song based on all of that and uh, I am lucky to say that um, I've had several people come up to me and say that this song has helped them through a troubling time in their life. And uh, as a songwriter, that's, that's pretty much as good as it gets to know that something you've created has helped somebody else. So if you guys feel like doing some couch dancing with us, join us. <clears throat> My troubles like a drum. Oh, 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 I beat my troubles like a drum. Oh, 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 I beat my troubles like a drum. Oh, 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 as I will beat this like a drum. Damn. Got a little rim shot in there. All right, so uh, I did see you have a visual aid for this next one because you put it up there. I do, I put it up there. We're going to do a song for you called She's Coming Apart. And uh, this one does feature a lot of folks on hand claps. It does. What folks are those? The ones you already saw a few times. <laughs> These fine folks. <laughs> These folks were all uh, sponsors for the CD uh, coming into frame. So they all came to a weird dungeon studio in, uh, in Brunswick, Brunswick, New York. And uh, they actually are all clapping on this clap, uh, or clapping on this clap. Track. Clapping on this track in, in the, uh, on the album. It's very nice. Yeah. So yeah. Um, a lot of you ask me who is Annie in the song, and... Um, so Annie is this girl that I used to know, and uh, she was a really good student, and she used to follow all the rules, and she got engaged to her high school sweetheart when she 
went to Mexico, and, uh, you know, things did not work out, because really, he was a super big creep, and uh, she didn't realize that when she was uh, in high school, and so, um, you know, she learned from her mistakes, and later on, she learned so much and grew so much that she almost felt like she was the same person, so when she wrote this song, she decided to call the person Annie, because her middle name is Anne Marie, and so she felt like that would be a good representation of herself. Instead of doing the song in first person, she would talk about herself in the third person, much like she's doing now. And uh, she met this guy later on who uh, asked her out on a proper date after they had joined a band together and took her to Ben and Jerry's where he was the manager of the Ben and Jerry's and told her she could have free ice cream. And so she married him. The end. <laughs> 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 Who knew the power of free ice cream? <laughs> this song's so. called She's Coming Apart, <clears throat> but in retrospect, we probably should have called it Annie because that's what we call it all the time. We always say, what's on the set list, Annie? Yeah, so we're going to send this out to Annie, that girl who, um, man, I wish she could have wised up a long time before. Ready? <laughs> Standing. We get a little right. worry uh, doing these live streams this time of year because people have their windows open because it's gorgeous this week in upstate New York and we're we're pretty loud for a basement basement band. <laughs> Although when we built this studio in the basement, um, 
<laughs> we may have told this anecdote before, but we got some materials from the local, shall I say the name, the big box store? Yeah, sure. Big, let's call it the Ho big box store. The big box That's store. That's all we need. Yeah. Uh, and we went in and we said we need a steel door that locks and is about this high for our basement. And uh, we need some uh, duct tape. And uh, what else was it? Some soundproofing materials. Sound soundproofing material. And uh, they helped us get all these items and carry them out to our unmarked white creeper van. Didn't question us at all. No questions asked. Just loaded it right in and let us go off to build our murder basement. Yeah. So <laughs> Murder dungeon. Thanks to the big box stores for helping dungeon masters everywhere. All right. <clears throat> This next song, Astronauts, I don't think we've ever performed in front of people, have we? I think we've only done that here in the basement. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't so. think we ever did it live yeah. uh, in, front, in front of people. Yeah. Because um, we wrote it and recorded it during the apocalypse. So. Yeah. Also, Seven Seas and Hell No. That yep. would be yep. the case for those as well. This song, uh, we thought we would tell you. I mean, we've told you the story a bunch of times about what the lyrics are about this one. This was inspired by, you know... Partly by the pandemic and partly by our childhoods. Um, you know, the world this past year has felt very heavy. The weight of the world has felt very heavy. And if you read a lot of the lyrics that I write, you will see that the weight of the world is a common theme in a lot of my lyrics. Um, but it weighed particularly heavy this past year. And Rich and I would go out for walks uh, almost every day. And at night a lot of the time and because we like to be creepy like that and walk around our neighborhood at night we're still late night musicians in the dark yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and scaring the neighbors and we would look up at the sky and there were a lot of times that the sky was very clear and um rich would say did you ever look at the stars when you were a little kid and lay back in the grass and look at the stars and i started thinking about that and uh we wrote this story about um being up in the stars and looking down at the world and maybe it weighs a little less from up there and things look a little smaller from up there. And so that's what the lyrics are about. But um, the writing of this one was a little different. I would say typically most of our songs start out with the music part. Mm -hmm. <coughs> noodling. The chords, the we chords. do a lot of, a lot of noodling uh, while I'm setting up, you know. Yep. And Melanie will be like, I like that, I like that. And she'll take her phone out and she'll record it and then sometimes we work on it later. Yeah, I would say that's the... I would say the more than half of yeah. the songs have started so that I would way. Say maybe like ninety percent. Um, some of them start with me messing around in the piano, right, and showing you some. Some of them start with you messing around in the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, Fireflies, actually, you wrote that piano part and played it on the record. Uh, people have seen me play it more often live, but you played I that play, on the record. I play it terribly. I, I use Come studio on. trickery to get that on the recording. So anyway. <laughs> um, but this particular song started with a vocal melody, and I don't know that we've had a lot of them that just start with a vocal melody and then we write the chords around it. Um, so pretty much I've been writing on Rich's coattails all these years. So <laughs> this particular song started exactly. with a vocal melody, and I sang it into the phone, and I was so excited to show Rich. And then I tried to figure out what some of the chords were on the piano, and he, felt, uh, he figured out the rest, and we you know, wrote the song around that. I remember I had the keyboard on the living room floor. I do remember that. And yeah. uh, we, were, we were messing around. It's um, cool. It's a fond pandemic memory. It is. Writing and recording this song. It is. And we recorded it virtually, which is not something that we've ever done before. Um, yes. Hopefully we never do it again. It was a great experience and it was interesting, but it's definitely much easier. I mean, there's a... When we wrote the song we, and we submitted a demo to the, a guy, Paul uh, Coldery, who produced it. A guy, it. Paul. Some guy, Paul. <laughs> and uh, there was no solo section in it. And he was like, oh, I had this idea, you know, maybe do kind of like uh, something reminiscent of the vocal melody for a pass. And I must have played that 5,000 times before I got the sound right and, and just kind of everything uh, the way that he was kind of uh, uh, hoping for it to work out. And I'm, I'm glad that he persisted with that because I think it came out great. But shout out to you because we recorded it here in the basement. And it's Paul, creepy basement. That guy Paul who produced it has like won Grammys and stuff. So like he kind of knows what he's talking about. And he, I believe, said to you that the tracks you recorded were some of the best he's ever received. He said they were just as good as anything he's ever gotten before from so, a place. So I was like, wow, all right. Not too shabby for not our too basement, shabby. there, bub. 
All right, this one's called Astronauts. You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I put a rocket through the atmosphere, sleep on the way out of here, leaving all those summer nights behind. I understand so I went to dreams, we didn't dare to dream. Well, gravity was holding us down When I could never let go I The weight of the world To say I Heard days Heard should Seem so small And we could That's too good to last So we've got a whole world we can oh, When the sky's too dark to see The stars and crazy dreams I wish for one of those summer nights When she could always let go of The weight of the world So uh, another one of the new songs that we have never played out live in the flesh, in front of other people in the flesh, is uh, this next one that we're going to do. It's, uh, it's called Seven Seas. And we talked a bit about the songwriting process for us. And this one came about in another kind of weird way. I actually wrote um, a verse on the piano that we kind of liked, right? Can't you come to me? I kind of went like that, and uh, but it was kind of jazzy for us, and so um, we always thought, yeah, that verse is not going to cut it. That verse is not going to cut it. I mean, the, the thing that's most remarkable about this song is that the uh, you know that chorus, that chorusy section that's you. Know, The melody that Melanie wrote there, 
we wrote probably 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and it's just been kind of sitting in a folder in a, uh, on, our, on our music computer here. And I feel, feel like every few years we go back to and go, oh, I remember that. I really like that. But, but that verse. But the verse, the, we were, you know, we came you know, up with like 30 different verses over, over those 10 years. But the thing is, is the <laughs> verse was what led us to that chorus. So the verse was a means to an end, as they say. So we That's scrapped true. it. We scrapped it. And then we were trying to come up with a new verse for this because we did love it so much. And Rich was, you were noodling, I think. And you started playing Noodling, that. yeah. You, he started playing that Work, part that he plays on, on the verse. Working on a new song, yeah. And uh, I said, what is that? And he said, I don't know. It's something new I've been working on. I don't know if it's any good, which is normally what he says. And I said, it's, <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's great. I love it. And so I said, did you try pairing it with that chorus where we can never find something? And lo and behold, it fits. Keys and everything, right? We didn't even change the key. No, the key, the key was good. Everything fit. And then we, uh, we, uh, I think we had part of the bridge written somewhere in the middle of uh, those those ten years. Uh, and the, <laughs> the bridge ends uh, ended up being one of my favorite parts of, uh, of the two. But I changed the melody the recently. Yes, the melody was yes. not what it is now. But like uh, that ending melody as we're going in from the bridge into the uh, little solo section there is. Uh, like one of my one of my favorites, Melanie. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Richard. All right, so shall we try this one? This one's called Seven Seas, and we can't wait to play it for you guys in the flesh. <clears throat> Sometime relatively soon. <clears throat>
volcano and we've got a love as big as the the southern sea Ah, damn, woman. Damn, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys like that song as much as I do, because I love it. It's probably one of my favorite songs we ever wrote. Took 10 years. <laughs> I love it, too. Speaking of songs we love, we mentioned our song Fireflies, and if you saw the tattoo show last week, you saw that uh, a friend of ours who is in Nashville, Tennessee, named Mr. Paul Bellantoni, uh, has a tattoo on his over his heart that says Hope Shines that was inspired um, by our song Fireflies, which is an incredible honor for us. He's a, a very talented guy, as you're about to see, a great piano player and a vocalist. And so we collaborated on that song with him this week, uh, yeah, Fireflies. Such, such a fun experience. And um, we're going to show it to you now. So here it is. <laughs> She's been calm and saving me And I wish you know me on signs And she's been calm and saving me But she's got no one on Nothing 
there were some nice comments on here about how Paul and my voice blend, and I was thinking the same thing. I was so excited. He did such a great job. We're going to get him on the phone now. He's going to do some live stuff for you guys now. Um, there's this Skype. I don't know if you guys, can they hear this? I don't know. Do, 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 Nobody do. knows. Do, do, it's all a mystery do. to me. So we're just going to get him up here on I, Skype. I hope he's home. We didn't plan this at all. <laughs> Check one, two. Um, I am a little concerned. Am I calling the right Paul? There, there he, he is. is. Hi! <laughs> You're a little frozen there. We see your beautiful necklace, just not your face. Oh, no. <laughs> what do we do? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if you got to see all of the wonderful comments from everybody, but they were loving that. There we go. You're back. Are we back? You're yes. back. Yay. You're Hello, back. everyone. Yay. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. What a great show, guys. Thank, oh, you. thank you. I've been loving it. That's why I was running to the camera because I was still watching. I'm like, who <laughs> like, to this? <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for having me. We did that once um, together live in uh, Fort Lauderdale, but never yeah. with you on the piano. Never with you. No. On the piano. No. Yeah, we had a um, we had both our bands there that day that we were doing. A, a I believe show. that you're being humble. Yeah. I believe that we opened for you at that. Oh show. well, I don't. Well. Uh, yeah, I think it was a well. double headline thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to do some house cleaning. You guys can hear Paul. You can see and hear Paul. I'm just, uh, you know, I know you can see and hear us blabbering. We've been blabbering on. But I just want to make sure that you guys can see and Have hear Have you got Paul. Paul clearly in your sights, everybody? I think they will. I, I think they do. I just wanted to double check. Okay. Okay. So um, is the collaboration making your next recording? Maybe. Maybe we should think about that. That would be super cool. So, um, Yeah. So speaking of recording... Yes, they can see you and hear you. We're okay, good. good. So everybody, <laughs> this is Mr. Paul Bellantoni, and he is currently in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. We met you in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, when we played a show down there, and you were introduced to us. You and your bandmate, Charlene Chuckery, who I think is yes. watching. Well, I believe she's here right now, yeah. You were our sound engineers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you could tell, my sound check earlier, fake it to make it. <laughs> he, is, he is an incredibly skilled musician, but as far as tech prowess, Paul and I share, uh, yeah. share that. We share our tech skills, Paul and I. Rich is, Rich is the one that You're made both it doing happen. fine. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just a nerd. <laughs> so, um, you just recorded, you're in the process of making a record. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so, you know, I don't know if you guys knew, but this thing called the pandemic's been happening all year <laughs> and it's, uh, it's bonkers. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I relocated to Nashville with, uh, two of my dear friends and, um, we actually record here a lot. And one of the, uh, um, one of the uh, engineers that works on our project, uh, the amazing man, Mr. Zach Kasich, he, uh, he um, came up to me on Thanksgiving and we were talking about an, um, an EP that we had done years ago and like wanting to go back at it again. And one thing led to another with um, just an amazing team of people that I'm surrounded by, like my manager, Crystal Gans, um, my dear friend, producer, Kevin Chase. And um, we were like, why don't we give it a go and let's do some new songs too. So, um, yeah, uh, it was a very cathartic experience, and we just got into the studio and created a new record that's uh, just finishing up right now and hopefully having it out in the summer. That's awesome. awesome. Uh, and you're going to do the you're gonna do the single off of that for us I live. I am, right I am, yes. So I was lucky to hear that in advance, and um, <laughs> we both heard you in sound check, and I get the goosebumps every time. So why don't you tell wow. everybody about this song? So um, thank you so much, guys. Thank I really, you. really appreciate that. Um, well, uh, uh, you were mentioning the weight of the world earlier, and um, a lot of a lot of the base of what I write about has to do with like the human experience and like carrying that weight as well. And 
finding hope through a lot of the dark places. And um, I I knew whatever the next project I was going to do was going to be on the personal side. It was just it was the it, the path that was um, happening at the time. And um, prior to the pandemic, I was doing what a lot of people were doing. I was working really hard, um, kind of burning the candle at both ends. Like my mindfulness wasn't there, my priorities weren't there, and or at least I thought they were. And um, you know, everything kind of came to a crash. Um, for for people that don't know me, like it, a lot of musicians have day jobs. I was a hairstylist as well as um, working in music, and um, everything shut down for me. And I was kind of leaning on certain relationships at the time and trying to hold together like a fabrication of what I thought I needed out of life. And, um, you know, I, I hate to nerd out, but like you ever watch Star Trek The Next Generation, like that hollow deck, yes. you know, they like go and they like go to like that phantom place and like yes. they can be anywhere and do anything. And it's, you know, I, um, you know, the kindling to the fire was, um, I got my heart hurt pretty bad by someone that was, you know, really important um, to me and honestly, circumstantial really. And, uh, you know, life just was changing so fast. And next thing I know, I'm in Nashville, I'm starting a new life, who knows what's happening. Um, and a lot of healing really started to happen. And I remember my best friend, Alicia Sky, would always say it to me, like in times of struggle, you know, none of this is real. None of this is real. It's all a fabrication of ego and like all this and like that, that hollow deck, none of this is real and rebuilding everything. And like, what is my purpose? Who am I? You know, the music full force always like dragging me back in, as I'm sure you guys know, it's always there with us. And it's a huge form of our therapy as well. And um, so it was, you know, sometimes playing make believe can break your heart and <laughs> The universe has a way of being like, all right, I'm going to pull you out of this, even if you're dragging, like kicking and screaming and have to be dragged out of it. And I realized that this is, it's all an illusion. And we have to like trust ourselves to find our true happiness and get through it and get to hope. And that's essentially what the song's about. That's beautiful. Will you play it for us? Absolutely. Okay. So, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna give you the full screen here, so we're not lurking in the in yeah. the in the corner here. Oh, but I like it when you lurk. <clears throat> so, um, thank you guys so much for having me. By the way, I I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And what's funny is that you're on the TV screen, so I'm like looking at you over here, <laughs> camera. Okay. So this is illusions, and I hope you all enjoy. And thank you so much for having me.
That was awesome, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, your voice. That <laughs> song is so great. You are goddamn you, amazing. Oh, thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> you can't see the comments where you are, but that is what everyone's saying. It's not just me. They're all freaking out over oh, here. Man. A couple of people asked the name of your band, and he does go by Paul Bellantoni, correct? Yes, That's, that's yeah. what you go as. And if you look in the comments on uh, this video that we have up on YouTube and also on Facebook, you know, underneath the video, we have a bunch of, hey, check us <laughs> out here, blah, blah, blah. There's a link. Uh, to Paul's stuff, and it sends you to uh, your Spotify and uh, and how to find you on Apple Music and your website and things like that. So um, please check it out. Absolutely, and we'll yes, please come say hello. Yes, and we'll uh, post the uh, the Fireflies video independently on on YouTube. And so we will we'll pull it out this weekend. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh. So uh, do you have a Venmo in case anybody wants to throw a tip your way? I do. I believe it was put on my link tree, okay. um, and it is. Yeah. At Paul dash Bellantoni dash one. Okay. okay. And there's Perfect. a link to that in the YouTube uh, description and also on Facebook. As yes. Well, to, he, his, to his link tree. He, correct. He has a link tree link there. So it's got all of the things. So you can please um, find him and follow him, everybody. I know you loved him. And you're doing a live stream coming up, right? Don't you yes, have coming up? Yes. On Friday the 23rd, I'm doing a live stream. Okay. Yes. On so. bid. So we'll all we'll all meet uh, we'll all meet there. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll share yeah. that we'll share that as well. So uh, to remind you guys on uh, on on that Friday the twenty third. Yeah. Yeah, and I love you guys so much. Thank you for having me. You we guys are you, always Paul. an inspiration. Can't wait to play with you soon in the world of people. Yeah. Absolutely. We love you, Paul. Thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you. Have soon. a great night. You too. So I'm so glad that you guys um, love that. Seriously, I get the goosebumps. That song is so good, and his voice is so good. And he's amazing on the piano. I'm really... Yes, um, he's awesome. And I'm standing here behind the piano to play a song, so um, I just am not going to do that just yet. I need to cleanse your palate before I play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Melanie? He's so good. I can't play the piano now. <laughs> So, yeah, um, after the show, you guys, um, you know, underneath the video where we, where we put links shamelessly to our Venmo and our PayPal and our merch store and stuff, there is a link there to check out Paul. And it's a link tree link, which means if you click on it, it shows you all of the things. And it's got all of his links so you can find his music and follow him so you know when the new record comes out. And, um, and yeah, we'll all watch his live stream together on the 23rd. Cool. Very cool. So, um, in the meantime, yes, we're gonna do um, this next song of ours is a song of ours called "Gold," and um, so you said to me you had a visual or audio uh, aid for I, this. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I I sprung this on Melanie uh, while Fireflies was playing. Uh, I don't know if so. I found the old original demo that we submitted uh, to the producers. 
uh, for uh, this song. And I, I think I, I don't know. I seem to mess them up. Let me see if I uh, got any of it here. I suppose I'm sorry it doesn't end it. Made a mess yeah, and wasted every second. <laughs> It'd be fair if you just walked away. Sometimes I still see guns behind the door but I never look for ledges anymore I've been trying So, I know, I yeah, know. that's the original demo I was a little dark there, I went a little dark There's something about a gun Yeah, I often go a little dark with the lyrics That's, uh, and life So that's a thing that Rich pulls me back on. He's like, yeah, that's maybe a little too dark. The other day I went out for a walk and I came back and I said I had uh, put a bunch of lyrics into my phone and I said, what do you think? I got some, I think I got some good lyrics and I read them to him and he goes, that's a little soul crushing. Let's rework it a little, it's a little dark. So uh, Rich is, um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rich grounds me. He's my, as Paul said in the dark times, he looks for hope, hope shines, he looks for hope. Rich pulls me back from the brink all the time, and um, no pressure. No pressure. No oh pressure. Boy. Oh, boy. Um, without you, you know. Uh, so anyway, this song, Gold, <laughs> this was written um, about how uh, it's a love song about relationships and real relationships, much like Seven Seas in times of distress and how sometimes it's, it's difficult to be in a relationship uh, where you're very close all the time. It's challenging, right? Especially with me. No it's difficult to be in a relationship with No comment. With me. No comment. Um, and uh, I, was, I was finding it hard to put these, these uh, lyrics down. And I kept writing them, and, you know, they were, I don't know, they were, they were trying too hard. The lyrics were trying too hard. And I remember having a conversation with my friend Chet Seidel about it. He's watching. You guys all love him. And uh, Chet and I were talking about it. And I Don't said, speak you know, for me. <laughs> and I said, I just, I, I know what I want to say in this song, but I just feel like I'm, I'm writing these things that are just poetic for the sake of being poetic and not because it's what I want to say. And I just want to say it. And he said, have you ever heard this song, In the Shape of a Heart, by Jackson Brown? And I said, no. And so he said, you should listen to it. And so I listened to it. I found an acoustic version. Uh, and I listened to it and, and started to cry and then immediately wrote all the words to this song. So shout out to Chet for also helping to ground me. <clears throat> um, yeah, but one of the things we learned with working with Paul um, Coldery on this one was the value of uh, a producer, right? Indeed. The uh, churning that the guitar was doing ultimately did not make uh, the recording. Mm -mm. I have one more visual aid. I don't know if okay. it's going to work. Yes, blocking Melanie. This is what we actually used in gold. It's called the Omnichord. It's basically you push a button and it generates a chord and it has that weird kind of organ-y quality that yeah. is in all of the verses of uh, gold. Yeah, and um, I remember when I was singing this in the studio, uh, a challenge of singing in the studio with producers and being nervous, and Rich and I were signed at the time to a label, it was before we became emancipated from them, and uh, there was a lot of pressure, and I was trying to sing it perfectly, and you know, that's really not what it's all about, and my friend Chad, um, who's watching tonight also, reminded me of this story and said I should mention this, so shout out to Chad. Um, but when I was recording this in the vocal booth, I was in a separate room from everybody else, and Rich and Paul and Sean, the producers, were all in one room. And all I could hear was when they would talk to me in my headphones, they would hit the button and go, let's try that again. One more shot, <laughs> they would just say. And then... Uh, yeah, we're all smoking cigars. <laughs> yeah, we're the big boss. You sing it again, woman, sing it again, yeah. And then I just remember... I can't remember if it was Paul or Sean, but one of them came on and said, look, I don't know the particular story of what inspired this song and what inspired the lyrics, but it's clearly a very personal song for you, and it's clearly about pain. And so um, maybe you should think about that for just a minute before you sing it. And... 
you know, that's the value of a producer, right? They can remind you of that. It seems like a really basic thing when you're singing in the studio, but sometimes you lose sight because there's all this other stuff going on and you're nervous. And so I thought about it and I s started to sing it and uh, I started to cry. And if you go back and listen to the track that made the cut uh, on the record, I am actually crying in part of it. And um, I remember finishing and I had like tears streaming down my face and I just hear, and the headphone comes on. And they're like, yep, that's it. We got it. Come on up. <laughs> so uh, I will always remember that. Yeah. Oops. It was awesome. Not the crying, but the performance. <laughs> <laughs> the crying was pretty good, too. <clears throat> Ready? I suppose I'm sorry it doesn't mend it I made a mess of everything again and It'd be fair if you just walked away I suppose I'm not another boy again I'm not one for ledgers anymore And I've been trying Harder than I say. So don't say it's too late to save us now. Cause all that I know is there the shadow. Suppose forgiving doesn't mend it Cause we're bound to screw it up again But just know I never meant to let you down I guess it was so hard for me to see Since you've been the anchor keeping hold of me there So don't say it's too late to save us now. Cause all that I know is that the shine goes and few. And go and if you stay go oh but baby you're mine go Hi. 
Ah, damn. Melanie Kramer. Vocals in the piano. That was gold. Woo! Woo! Oh, it's just Melanie in that shot. I didn't plan that out well at all. Wait, here. Hi, everybody. Talk to the people about next week while I switch guitars. Well, okay. I'm going to move back behind the drums, too. Next week, we're doing the British Invasion show. We're going to do a bunch of uh, cover songs, songs we did not make up next week, songs by British bands, which we tend to enjoy. You guys like a lot of British bands, too, I'm sure. So that's the British Invasion show. And then... Yes. We've got the Unplugged and Unruly show. I think that means Rich is going to throw a temper tantrum when he sets up the acoustic guitar. Is that what that means? Is that the unruly part uh, of Unplugged? Maybe. Uh, I'm also uh, going to... Uh, I think we're going to have a special, some special guests on that show as well. Oh, I should talk about that. So, like tonight, the Brigantino you guys, sisters. You guys got to meet the amazing Paul Bellantoni. Um, and just a reminder to check out his links below and uh, find him and like him and love him and watch him and Ta -da. stream him. Uh, but on that on that show, the Unplugged and Unruly show, we will be introducing you to two friends. Two sisters from Brooklyn, Lisa and Lori Brigantino. And you have seen, some of you have seen their comedy show because we shared it with you. They do a musical comedy act called The Vicky and Nikki Show where they play two women from Minnesota. And um, Yes. But this is just them doing their music as Lisa and Lori Brigantino. So they will be on uh, with us, and I think we're going to do a collaboration <laughs> with them. Sweet. And they're also going to play some of their stuff. And then the following week, we've got some madness for you um, with the Carla and Tony superhero we do. show. We're so. not really sure what it's going to be about because we haven't done anything for it yet, other than this lovely graphic We'll figure here. it out. Uh, actually, we did one thing. Uh, what is it? Uh... So, High you know, drama there. Nerding out, it. as usual. I enjoyed when, when Paul Bellantoni asked us, when ta Paul Bellantoni asked us, do you watch Star Trek? <laughs> 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 we apparently never had that discussion with him. I guess not. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> as you know, super nerds. We're super nerds. So, um, Now, you talked about something briefly uh, in the last song about uh, what it was like to, uh, to be signed and on a label. Hey, you know what you do? Sit there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> coincidentally, uh, this next song, uh, we wrote a little bit about our experience uh, with, the, with the label. Not to get into too much uh, detail and nitty-gritty, but we had a, a, a similar experience that a lot of musicians have. It, you know, we felt like it would be really good to be signed, and we were signed, and, and uh, we uh, had a very nice introduction to some producers who we continue to work with even without the label. But when we decided we wanted to leave the label, it's always a little bit of a legal sticking point about your publishing. Yeah. Uh, so the publishing is the thing where you, know, you can collect money for uh, streaming. It means and, owning and your places. songs, yeah, too. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So there was a little bit of a back and forth with that, and uh, apparently I am very, A, persistent, and B, annoying, uh, because we ended the discussion, uh, basically the president of the label called our lawyer and said, I will do whatever I need to do, just tell me what I need to do so I never have to speak to Richard Labuti again <laughs> about publishing. That so, is a quote. Yeah. I don't even think he said about publishing. I think he just said, I never have to just speak in to Richard Labuti again. What do I have to do? But we got our publishing rights back, so win-win. Uh, 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 uh. Yay All for right. persistence. So, um, yeah, so we wrote this song about that experience, and um, 
We made a music video about this. There's a really cool um, uh, video that an artist made. Uh, why am I blanking out on his name? The artist that made this video, I'm blanking out on his name. Philip LeBlaine Thank from you. Montreal, Canada. Thank you. He did a really cool uh, music video for this if you want to check it out. It's called Thieves. <clears throat> A little full of cheap salvation Oh, you gotta, you gotta Big bad me To save my soul And baby, I think we you can You return all walls and lines Sell off water like it's wine And frankly, I ain't got the time I want something true And baby, it's just say Music business. Sure. So uh, this is a song called "Leftover Girl" from our CD Revolution, and uh, I wrote the lyrics so that this song was phrased like it was about a relationship, and we've all had our fair share of bad relationships. So I thought that was universally relatable, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> But really, the secret behind this song, because I have somebody who never makes me feel like a leftover girl in my relationship. Aw, uh, that's nice. Mm. We have that on video now, you sang that. That's nice. <laughs> so the secret is that this song was actually written about um, <clears throat> our relationship with the music business and some of the things that we have gone through, and especially... Um, not to take anything away from you, Richard, but especially as a female in this business, it can be pretty brutal. You are judged on things that have absolutely nothing to do with your abilities or your talent, and it gets pretty 
pretty brutal and um, can make you feel pretty awful. And so, um, so that's really what inspired the lyrics to this song. And I hope, my wish is that no one out there ever feels <clears throat> like a leftover girl. Uh, whatever your... Except for you, Larry. Gender identification is. My hope is that no one out there ever feels like a leftover. <laughs> So uh, the next one is The Cost of You. And uh, we were talking earlier about Seven Seas. It took us about 10 years to write that. You know, we had written a, a couple little segments of it, and then it took 10 years really to develop it. And then I'm not sure we would have ever finished it if it wasn't for the pandemic because we had lots of time to kind of go through our closet and... Uh, <laughs> you are right back there? And, <laughs> and kind of... Uh, 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 just find some nuggets that we wanted to work on. I think that might have been the only one. But this next song, The Cost of You, we actually wrote in this room that you can't see. It's right off to the side here. And I have a very vivid memory of us saying, you know, we kind of wanted to write a song that was, uh, had a basic building blocks, like just four chords, kind of over and over again, the built-in intensity throughout the song. And uh, we wanted to be, you know, not super upbeat, but, you know, have a driving beat. So Melanie just kind of started playing this driving beat. And I just played some random four chords. And, uh, and then we just kind of built it on that. And I feel like the whole song was written within like two hours. So 10 years, two hours. There's no, there's no real blueprint for us uh, writing and, and finishing uh, these songs. Um, yeah, it just can't kind of came out um, 
like an emotional just <laughs> thing that came out sometimes. Songs can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this song was written about, uh, you know, the lyrics of this one are a little more dark. You didn't rein me in on this one as much. <laughs> no. It's just about how sometimes in life, like you, you expect a little too much sometimes, and uh, the universe just sort of lets you down, and it's not fair, and that's life, right? That's what they tell you. Life is not fair, but sometimes when you figure that out, it stings a little. <laughs> so um, that's what this song is about. Ready? <clears throat> That drum beat's real simple, but it's it's very it's very moving. So that was kind of our artsy fartsy uh, piece. I, I I remember that uh, when we submitted like the twenty five plus songs uh, to uh, uh, see what would end up coming in the frame, 
This was not one of the songs that was picked, ca The Cost of You, but uh, they asked us, is there a song that you wrote that it's going to break your heart it's not on this record? And we both said at the same time, The Cost of You. So, uh, so yeah, it made it on the record, which I thought was really cool. Shout out to our friend Mark Frederick, who is a music teacher from the area who um, was a one-man string quartet on that. Um, yeah. yeah. All the strings on the recording were, were played by him. One yeah, man. Awesome, yes. One man. So thanks for joining us tonight, guys. And uh, thanks again to our friend Paul Bellantoni for joining us and being just such a lovely soul. Um, we are better off knowing you, Paul. And, um, Absolutely. Check him out. Show him, show him some love. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll let you know when uh, he's doing his live stream. I think it's on the 20, uh, Friday the 23rd. So. And we're going to keep doing these free live streams until um, I think May 8th is our last one. It's our last of the weekly Saturday night live yep. streams. And then they'll be a little bit more sporadic after that because we have some gigs uh, live out in the wild. Our very first show out in the wild will be May 9th at an iconic venue in our area called Cafe Lena. And we are going to be doing a stripped down uh, acoustic show. And uh, I know that they're going to be live streaming it as well. So once we have more details about that, we will let you guys know. Uh, and more gigs are appearing every day on the tour page on the website. So That's if you right. want to see us live in the wild, uh, keep checking that uh, website. And uh, yes. gigs will keep appearing. And if you have a minute, just like this video. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook. There is a Venmo link and a PayPal link hey. in the, uh, in the uh, Facebook and the YouTube descriptions. And right here on the screen. So... A lot of you... Um, if you dug the show and you want a tip, you can do that. If not, that's cool, too. We still love you. A lot of you very <laughs> generously uh, have helped us through this uh, year, and please know that we are so grateful to you, and thank you so much for all the love and support, um, not just financially, to all the love and support through this year. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We're going to do one more, and it's, uh, it's, it's the rocker that we wrote in the pandemic, as I, as I like to say. Um, yeah, so uh, this song, Hell No, Rich, Rich had said, you know, I want to write a rocker. So um, <laughs> we were trying a couple of things. I said it just like that, too. <laughs> I want to write a rocker. And nothing, nothing was working. And I, I went through this. I had this folder on my cell phone of old ideas that we had come up with. And they were videos of, like, Rich's hands playing things on the guitar, me singing things over it. Um, and just maybe about... I don't know, was there like a dozen little snippets on there? Most of it was crap, but <laughs> <laughs> most of it, it was like, that's oh. That's honest, that's honest. That's why we never worked on this. It's crap. So, um, but we had heard this one thing that went, here's to disaster. -na 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 -na. And uh, I was kind of humming that. I'd, I'd come up with something like that in the van one time on a car trip. And so I showed it to Rich, and he's like, yeah, I really like that. And so he started... He started messing around on the guitar, and, um, and we came up with it. And it was from a while back. So yeah. I'm really glad I checked my phone. Yeah. <laughs> it grew from there. It's uh, super fun to play, and I can't wait to play it live in front of people. I just want to give a shout-out cool. also to my therapist uh, who uh, inspired these lyrics. All right. <clears throat> like in a good way. She's awesome. All right. Heartbeats are one thing you can count on. I'll beat myself up, and all these rabbits on the run. I learned way too early. The monsters don't stay beneath the bed. A girl, don't just stand out, but in your life, we down But I say. I made me who I've become A queen with a backbone And no more rabbits on the road I keep on trying To learn that I deserve this crown Cause I am 
Thank you guys so very much for hanging with us. We love you guys for hanging with us every week. We really appreciate it. We got all these shows coming up next week, the British Invasion Show, Unplugged and Ruly after that, the Carl and Tony Superhero Show. And then one more week after that, it's going to be kind of a, an intimate close-up thing that we do for our last of our, our weekly shows. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks, you guys. Take care of each other, please. We'll Have a see safe you guys week. next week. Thank you. We're going to end with that uh, uh, the, the bean preview. All right. If only I know where it is there.